Uh, good morning, everyone. Fortunately for me, a lot of what I'm going to say in my slides have already been said. And since we are pressed for time, I'm able to go through my presentation um, quickly so we can get to the discussion. So I'm Doris Zahner, and I'm the Director of Test Development at the Council for Aid to Education, CAE. We're a nonprofit organization, and we have a flagship product called the Collegiate Learning Assessment. Um, and what we do is we assess higher order thinking skills of both high school students as well as college students. Um, and what I'm about to show you next, and so I, I, we come from the assessment world, which I know is not the most popular field, um, but I promise you, just like I say to my students, I, I also teach statistics, by the end of this lecture, you will have, I think, a different view about statistics in the case of my class, but also about assessment. Um, so I'm going to show you a, a, a series of slides from an item that I want to tell you just up front. It's not our item. This is a sheet of paper that one of my colleagues has pinned up on one of his boards. I don't know exactly where it came from or what the legacy of it is exactly, but it's something that we use and we want to use to illustrate a point about assessment. So consider this, okay? At the school fair, Scott hopes to catch a fish that has stripes. What are the chances he will catch a striped fish? Any, any guesses or anyone want to answer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of conference that I want to speak at because <laughs> you are my people, right? Um, so what do you think the publisher of this assessment or the, the people who are giving this assessment are trying to get the student to say? 50%, one half, two fourths, 0.5, right? Um, and these are all, this is an, op we talked about open versus closed-ended assessments. This is an open-ended assessment, actually. And so all of the following responses would have been acceptable, and the student would have gotten full credit for that answer. But we love this item because look at what this student says. Scott's chances of catching a striped fish are bad. <laughs> um, OK, well, why? Why, student? are Scott's chances of catching a student bet. And this item actually is supposed to be one of the innovative item types that are open-ended and supposed to elicit that type of response to get students to think. The next part asks student, what, what, is your, what is the reasoning behind your response? And this is awesome. Explain your answer. Well, the striped fish are moving away from the hook, and Scott doesn't have any bait on his hook. <laughs> OK. <laughs> right. So the point here is that this student received zero points on this item in a standardized test, okay, zero points. But CAE comes from a background where we, we aren't an assessment of any specific content, right? We don't, I've been asked to speak at this math um, summit and it's really awesome because I happen to love math and being Asian and all. Um, <laughs> and teach it, it, statistics, and so it's great. But what we, really, what we really want to express is our interest in fostering critical thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. And I feel like that's a really major theme of this summit um, today and tomorrow is these critical thinking skills. So yes, we argue that mathematical thinking and reasoning are essential, and critical learning is really, uh, and learning math is critical. But it should go beyond rote memorization and being able to just give the answer that the people that are get asking the questions want you to give. So we argue, wouldn't you rather hire this student if you were an employer, someone who can think about problem beyond just giving the rote answer of two-fourths, one-half, 50%, right? So I'm just going to show you very, very briefly some of the examples of what we do. So we're performance-based and integrated. All of our assessments really are about taking a subject matter, or a content area, I should say, that's engaging and interesting to the students. So we develop these items that we find topics that are engaging. This is a college student level um, item, and it's about finding alternative fuel sources. So we feel like this is a global question, and it's an important one. And we get students to think about this critically. And there's math that's actually built into the item itself. So we, we talk about the need for this new energy, there's ethanol that's out there, but there are problems with ethanol. I've excerpted this. And then there's another alternative that's presented, and it's about algae. I didn't even know that algae was actually a biofuel until one of my item writers started writing this, and it turned out to be awesome. We have things in there like graphs, right? And we have things like tables. 
Um, and these are the types of things that we feel are the important quantitative skills, mathematical skills that people should be exhibiting in the world contributing to society, not whether or not they can find the area of a triangle or integrate a function or any of these other complex things that we're learning and teaching in the classroom. Rather, it's being able to contribute, uh, to be able to think, problem solve and think more um, holistically about math. So you're using quantitative reasoning and scientific reasoning on the assessments, and we feel like that should be the focus as opposed to um, as opposed to something like this, and this is something that I actually use in my class that I teach. Um, when I first started teaching, we actually, and I've been doing this for over 10 years, we actually would spend a lot of time going through and practicing this formula. So you get N, you get K, you get P, and you go in and you do the exercise. It's how I was taught, and it's how I originally was teaching. And then I started noticing about five or six years ago, the students, they would just like punch stuff into their calculator. It's one button, you know? There was no more need for this. And so the focus then became more so of what these things mean, why we have N choose K, what do they represent, and how are they useful? When would you use this? It's fine if you're presented with a formula and then you're given a scenario and you're told, okay, execute the formula. But Really, it's about why is this useful? So in my own field, we use binomial random variables actually to detect guessing patterns from students when they're taking tests. Can you tell if they're guessing? Yes, okay. So um, one of the main things that we then look at are these college and career readiness skills. So there's a focus on college and career readiness skills, and these are these critical thinking skills like analysis and problem solving, scientific and quantitative reasoning, modeling, understanding concepts and mechanics of math as opposed to just the calculations. And this is reflected in Heart Research Associates. They went out and they surveyed employers. These employers said, what are the important things that are important? Uh, uh, what are the important skills that you want in your employees? And critical thinking was amongst the top. And we also see this reflected in the United States, at least, in the two large consortia um, that are part of the race to the top, Park and Smarter Balanced. They're looking for more holistic, higher order thinking skills, in, uh, specifically in mathematics. And then the last slide is, why do we learn math? Well, at CAE, we believe that we should be learning math to become better critical thinkers so that we have good reasoning and analysis and problem solving skills. And to be able to just walk around every day and have everyday quantitative information be comprehensible to us, graphs, charts, infographics. And we, these are the important skills that are needed for citizens of the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you.